Hello. Welcome to Wax Chandler's Hall here in Gresham Street in the heart of the City of London. I'm Peter Tompkins, a past master of this livery company, and I'm going to take you inside for a tour which will be talked to by Stanley Liu, our beadle and hall manager, who will take you to the courtroom and then up to the Great Hall where we have our dinners and other ceremonies of the company. Welcome to Wax Chandlers. It is a great pleasure for me to show you our operating charter, which was granted to the company by King Richard III in 1484. One of three charters granted in his reign, very brief two years before he was killed at the Battle of Bosworth. Next to his charter, the following year, we have the granting of arms to the company. So we have the original um, memorial bearings, And later, in 1536, we have uh, another granting of our moral bearings, which gave us the unicorns as our supporters, and also our motto, truth is the light. Delivery companies operate by having a group of officers, namely the master, the senior warden and the renter or junior warden. They and the court of assistants will meet regularly, normally once a month, to go through the business of the company. We also have the charter of Rick James I here, and um, as you can see, they all have seals which are all made of beeswax. And directly opposite, we have uh, James II. And James II charter was, is quite interesting because in those days, James II was Catholic and his charters really restricted the power and authorities of all delivery companies, so it wasn't, wasn't very popular. Uh, so when William and Mary came over in the Glorious Revolutions, all the charters, operating charters from James II were declared illegal and the governing charter went back to the one that was done by Charles II. As we move along, we have a very interesting selection of city freedoms, freedoms granted by the City of London, which is one of the prerequisites of being a liveryman of a livery company, uh, by having both the freedom of delivery and the freedom of the city before you progress. Here we have uh, three certificates during the reign of three different monarchs, uh, George III, Victoria and George V, all belong to the same family, the old family. Towards the south end of the courtroom, we have a display of various artefacts uh, throughout the years, including uh, porcelain and silverware. A lot of these items are donations from uh, past masters or people who have joined the delivery company as well. Over the wall gives a perfect example of the length and breadth and the age of delivery. We have a list of virtually all the masters uh, since 1371, and now we will be going up to the Great Hall. Welcome to the Great Hall. This way. Great Hall is the main hall where dining, feasting, and meeting is held and it's normally the largest room in any livery hall as well. Uh, magnificently uh, refurbished with paintings and carvings, and it is the main centre attraction of the main building. What we have here is a shelf with some of the company's silverware. Again, it gives uh, perfect examples of the type of things which past masters, or maybe people who are joining the court, would donate to the company. In the days of old, not only was it uh, treasured, the uh, various gifts were, were given, but it was also used as collateral. So in, in bad times, the company can always cash in by having some of the silverware melted down. Welcome to the west end of the hall. 
And as you can see above, we have a beautiful stained glass window showing our coat of arms. Now this uh, particular coat of arms was put up to commemorate our quincentenary back in 1984. We have a variety of silver items which belong to the company on show here. First of all, we have uh, two rosewater bowls. And again, they show the iconic symbols of our livery, the skep, the cone, the coat of arms. Now, the rosewater bowl is used for a particular city ceremony where during major banquets in the evening, once the dinner is over, then these bowls will be circulated amongst the guests filled with rose water for the guests to dip their fingers in and also to touch their earlobes as well. A quaint city custom, uh, the touching of the earlobe with a little bit of rose water on the end of your napkins is designed to aid digestion. Another important piece in our collection is this centerpiece. And you may recognize that the two unicorns, which were the supporters on our coat of arms, on either side of a skep. Now, this particular piece, interestingly enough, was not given by any member of the company, but it was actually given by the worshipful company of Goldsmiths when they had their refurbishment in 1989 to 1990. And as a thank you gift, they gave this fantastic piece, which is always now placed in front of the master at every event. A couple of more items, we have like mustard pots. Once again, if you look underneath, you see the skep and also uh, sugar shakers as well. We also have this rather marvelous uh, candle snuffer, which has a skep, a small candle light holder, and on an ebony stick. It's not that much of an antique, but it was given to the company around about 1970. But it is always used at uh, evening events, and uh, it is something which many people remark upon. And finally, coming on to one of the most important pieces of uh, silverware in the company is the Norman Cell Cup. Now, the Norman Cell Cup is, uh, was made during the reign of Charles II, and it was actually given to the Wax Chandlers Company by one of their tenants uh, who lived in the property owned by the company in Aldersgate. And what we also have, what is really striking, is the actual design of the cup where they show scenes of beekeeping and bee farming as well. An interesting point about the cup, it is not engraved, it's actually chased. And the difference between engraving and chasing, if you're engraving uh, a picture onto a cup, you're actually cutting into the metal. So you're actually removing metal as you put the design on. A cup being chased is the actual design being nailed into the cup, you hammered into the cup. And one way, of find, uh, one way of recognizing this, if you actually take the lid off and you look inside the cup, you can see the pattern being replicated due to the fact of the pressure uh, given by knocking the picture into the cup. Throughout the long history of the wax chandlers, we have given to the City of London five Lord Mayors. Sir William Rose, back in 1872. Sir Gavin Arthur, back in 2012. Our latest offering for the City of London was Dame Fiona Wolfe, who was Lord Mayor in 2014. And is a member of the Wax Chandler's Court. Thank you for joining me in this virtual tour of the hall and I hope in the future we'll be welcoming you to it.